Hello, welcome to another edition of Bangkok Thought Leaders. Today, I've got a very special Bangkok Thought Leader with me. I've got Gareth Davis, who is the CTO, founder, co-founder, and partner of DDX here in Bangkok. He's also the recently elected chair of the British Chamber of Commerce. Hello there, Gareth. Good evening. <laughs> How's it going? Very well, how are you? Great, thanks. What did I miss there? That was a very extensive introduction. Well, what else is it you're up to? Uh, I, I think you've covered it mostly. Um, yeah, I've been around a while, right, in Bangkok now, I think eight years, um, always in and out of tech, startups, um, in and around the British Chamber for a while as well. So I think you've, you've nailed it, but um, no, all good, thank you. Awesome. Well, DDX is literally, uh, legally, I think, the, the, the most exciting new business in Thailand after winning the award last year at the yeah. Thailand International Business Awards. But what exactly does DDX do? Um, well, thank you for the, the kind words. Um, we're a tech consulting company. And what does that mean? That means that we're expensive, I think, is, uh, <laughs> is what most people think. But no, I, you know, ultimately, we are a group of people who have worked in lots of industries and lots of different types of projects who help companies achieve what they want with digital. Um, every company in the world now, and I, and I keep on saying this, is a software company. Like it or not, whatever you do, you're, you are a software company. Um, and we help people achieve their business goals using tech. Um, primarily in smart cities and automotive space. Now, again, what does that mean? Um, effectively, we do, we do two things. We're a project management company. So we, you know, someone says we want to achieve ABC, we will help them do that. And that, that our team, it could be their own team, whatever it might be. Um, and secondly, we're a systems integrator. So we connect stuff. You know, you'll, you'll have lots of core systems. And, and again, we're not a core systems provider. We, we can build tech, sure. But what we are better at doing is connecting things that companies already have and making it easier for them to access, view, and analyze their data. Um, so you mentioned smart cities there, and I've heard this a lot. Um, I know SimCity. SimCity, yep. Is it the same concept? <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly like SimCity. Um, only, you know, you're not, you're not trying to, uh, to make it difficult for your mm -hmm. Sims to leave the house. Um, a smart city it's, it's really difficult. It's not actually, it's not difficult to describe. It's very easy to describe. It is improving the quality of life of its residents. Mm. And I think you can think of a smart city at like a Bangkok level, right? You can have a whole city. Is that smart? Mm, Bangkok, perhaps not so. Um, or you can think of it at the building or district level. And so, again, you know, what is a smart city? It, it, it comes down to something that improves the quality of life of mm. people that live, work, and, and play there. Um, if you take Bangkok's needs, they're very different to London's needs. They're very different to Tokyo's needs. And therefore, there isn't really a sort of a blueprint, a one size fits all around what a smart city is. Um, you know, Bangkok has a lot of traffic, has a lot of pollution. Uh, its needs are very different to, to London's. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's really important. So if you take a building, well, who are the residents of the building? Is it, is it mixed use? Is it retail? Is it office? And again, the things you, you would put into one of those buildings is very different based on who's living, working, or playing there. And what kind of things would you see in a, in a, a smart building, for example? I'm mean, imagining things like IoT sensors, making decisions on temperature and climate control, things like that. Yeah, I, again, you can, you've got different types of granularity on, on what gets done. Mm -hmm. If you think about you know, the building that you live in, for example, you know, it's a nice condo on Saturn. Um, you know, you, I don't know if you're, you're lazy or you run your air cons all day, or if you, you're diligent and turn them off when you go home, but the first two. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, right? And, and I think that, you know, when you think about living, you think about being, getting home, and it's, it's cool. It's not a, not a sort of sweaty box that you, you come home to. So there's no reasons why sensors couldn't look at the weather nearby. There's lots of weather stations and go, it's particularly hot today. Let's, let's roll the blinds down to stop the sunlight hitting, hitting the, the room and warming it up. It could turn on the aircon half an hour before you arrive, and, and it could turn it off immediately when you leave. Um, you know, it could boil the kettle for you when you wake up or or in my instance open the curtains and turn my espresso machine on in the morning <laughs> um i it's 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 about again improving what's important to you now if that is energy bills if that is making sure your coffee's ready or if your bacon is fried when you wake up um it, that, that's that's what it is so it's iot sensors it's data and and in in a perfect world it will predict what you do and make your life easier 
Um, do you remember the teas made things that used to sort of make a cup of yeah, tea, yeah, you know, yeah. like a toaster, or a, yeah. a fried egg, a slice yeah. of bacon, and a coffee? Imagine that, but today, at today's scale, with okay. with given technology, it's like an intelligent teas made. <laughs> Pretty much. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, Gareth, obviously, you, you already described what you do at DDX. A lot of consulting around tech, especially. You're also leading one of the more exciting is British Chamber of Commerce groups, yeah. the Technology Working Group. Yeah. Um, so. I have to ask you, one of the hottest topics in the world right now is AI, which I think the, the mainstream just become aware of this year, but obviously yeah. it's been around for a while. How do you see AI impacting businesses over the coming year and, and years to come? Funny you should ask, we have to talk about this next week. <laughs> um, yeah, it depends on the industry you're in, I think. You know, and you're, you're in marketing world, you're in, you're in a content generation world, and right now we've got the boom of the generative mm. AIs. Um, you know, I think I could flip this around and ask you how you see it affecting your business. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's the biggest thing we've seen in the past decade. People go, well, Bitcoin and blockchain and so on and so forth. Um, it's it's scary. I think you know, I, I don't I don't think it's going to be operating robots and killing us anytime soon. Um, but the ability for it to influence people is perhaps the scary thing. So, but going back to business, um, look, it's it's going to help a lot of people. Mm. It's going to give us a lot more time. I think, mm. you know, I don't know how many presentations you write or proposals for customers where you're putting in a lot of you know, noise, perhaps at the beginning, which you then refine. I think getting that first draft done of of, uh, of bulk mm. is is what the generative AI is doing a really really good job of right now. Um, there's, yeah, I guess it can go anywhere. Yeah, I, I get a sense that, as you said, it's, a, it's the best assistant I ever had. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's the most responsive, the most yeah. intelligent assistant I ever had. It's just rapid and it's yeah. gives a lot of good prompts, asks a lot of questions. It, it's fantastic. I think certainly you asked about our industry. I think what we're going to see a lot of is, I think companies in house mm -hmm. probably not going to need big marketing teams in house because of. No. Like if you're paying a good copywriter full time, that's going to be a decent chunk of salary. Yeah. Probably don't need a full time person. So I think you'll see a lot of downsizing of marketing departments. And then the role of the CMO, I think, becomes more important. So it's whether you want to have a CMO in house, but I think agencies increasingly that will have to cut down fat. Basically, we'll have to be much more agile. But we can increasingly play kind of what Chris Crichton was always saying about outsource the non-essential things and focus on the core. I think even for marketing, that's going to be more and more what we do as well. So I think it's a really exciting time to be in for every sector, especially in the digital technology sector, because we're experiencing a generational leap forward. And those who embrace it yeah. are going to have a lot of fun. But those who don't are going to struggle. Yeah. Agreed. And I think one thing I've, you know, going back a decade now, one of the things I've always gone on about is this digital transformation. And it's not about putting software into a place, right? You know, it's not in this instance in, in your in your sort of industry of, of marketing and content writing. It's not replacing a human with tech. It's upskilling the human to use the tech more efficiently. And I think yes, whilst marketing teams will be downsized, they're going to be upskilled to do something more important. And it means that they're not going to be writing the bulk of the content. They're going to be fine tuning, which means that they're going to be doing more important stuff in marketing space. And, and I think it's any any kind of thing, whether you're a graphic designer, whether you're a content writer, whether you're doing sales, whether you're doing I don't, any, anything that requires any kind of content, replying to emails, you know. I'm not going to put chat GPT on auto send for my emails, mm -hmm. but there's no reason why it, you know, it couldn't draft a response for me. Mm -hmm. I, actually quite, I actually quite like Google's um, autocomplete in emails. It's, it's pretty handy. Um, yeah, I mean, AI is is definitely very exciting. It's it's not the be all end all. Um, the the pause that people are talking about is interesting, and that you know is that a pause for um, working out what's going to happen you know, to stop it killing people, or is it a pause to allow smaller companies to catch up? <laughs> I'm not sure which. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot there's a lot happening. And but I think what's really important is that you know you can't use. Chat GPT for everything. You know, there's going to be more and more specialized AI tools. So you're going to have one for content writing, one for sales, one for doing illustrations, one for doing photorealistic images. Um, I think the thing that's actually quite interesting and, and also somewhat terrifying is the integration with Photoshop. Um, there was a photo needed of me the other day for, for some British Chamber thing, and I needed to be in a suit and a tie. Um, and I don't think I have any photos of me in a suit and a tie. So our graphic designer used Photoshop to, to put me in a suit, uh, in which case I was like, well, 
give me a pocket square, give me nice. a tie bar, you know. Um, and, and that's kind of able to tweak it. Now, not that shade of blue. So, you know, I think that's quite interesting, but it does beg the question of what's real. Mm. Well, Gareth, can we just get you on record here with your, your formal announcement on this? Um, you said that robots definitely will not kill us from AI. Is this is your official position on this? <laughs> For now. OK. Um, <laughs> off the record. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll skip that comment for another day, um, just for geopolitical tension. But um, no, I think, look, I don't think AI is, is going to be killing anyone quite yet, um, unless you're an American. Um, what was it? The, the, the US Army, they had that, that sort of simulation with the... Oh, yes, yes. You know, and it decided that it was going to kill all the operators because they were getting in the way. So perhaps, um, but, I, you know, look, it's currently in a box. Um, but, but I guess what terrifies me a little bit, and this is why I wouldn't go on the record and say that AI is not going to kill anyone, is that if you're a small company trying to catch up with Google, mm. with OpenAI, with Microsoft, with anyone else, why would you give it restraints in order you know, you, you'd want to see what it can do and what mm. it can't do? And that's perhaps the, the scary thing, is you're always going to have nutters. <laughs> and then we get the paperclip issue. Paperclip issue? Oh, yes. Then you get the paperclip issue, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Google it. <laughs> no, no, come on, tell us. <laughs> tell us about the paperclip issue, David. So, um, so the theory is, as you mentioned, so AI will will follow its protocol yeah. to the letter. Yes. So, two thousand one space holiday is about that, right? It's uh, the AI HAL is told to right, its primary objective is get the the astronauts to the other planet. It gets conflicting information, and it realizes its only way to actually get the astronauts to the planet is if they're dead. So it has to kill the astronauts in order to achieve its primary objective, because that's what it's been told to do. Yeah. So this hypothesis, I think it's called the paperclip hypothesis. Or something like that. I'm not sure. But it's basically create as many paperclips as you can with the resources that are available. Yeah. So ultimately, everything in the universe is a resource. So in order for it to fulfill its goal, it just turns everything in the world, including us, all matter. It's just paperclips. Well, that's because we have iron in us, right? I think, you know, and, and <laughs> the idea is that if they supposedly found out that human blood contained iron, that they would harvest us yes. for the iron. For the paperclips, yeah. yeah. Um, to, to which I think, you know, you just keep a paperclip in your wallet. <laughs> I think you're looking for this. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's good advice, Gareth. Thank you. All right, so I think we've gone a little bit off topic there. Um, let's pull this back. So we've been speaking a lot about your your daytime job, uh, your full-time job. A lot of nighttime job. You've also got another full-time job, which is the, yeah. you were recently elected as the chair of the British Chamber of Commerce. Congratulations. Thank you. How's that going so far? It's good. You know, I think... It's a lot more involved um, and exciting and interesting than perhaps I thought it would be. Um, you know, the past couple of years of hanging out with Chris and the other board members, I perhaps underestimated how busy Chris really was. <laughs> um, and I'm definitely tired come the weekend. I think I used to use Saturday and Sunday to go out and party, and, and now I use it to sleep. <laughs> um, it's fun. You know, there, there's, a, there's a really good group of people. I'm meeting a lot of very interesting people. I'm learning an awful lot in a very short period of time. Uh, I think. You know, it's, it's, it comes as no surprise that I'm not from a corporate background. I'm not very much startup, SME, tech world. And the governance that, that is required from the chamber is, is definitely an interesting perspective that I've not always had. Um, but it, it's, it's good. You know, I'm learning a lot and thinking a lot. And, you know, I think the chamber's in a good place. Absolutely. We've had, we had Andrew and then we had Chris who kind of helped navigate us through COVID and stabilize things. Right? You're, you're kind of building on that for what comes next. I know there's a lot of exciting things happening in the chamber right now. What are some of those recent events and activities that we've, we've launched? You know, I think we used to have T3. T3 has been around for decades. I think. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, we've been around 150 years, so maybe maybe 149. No, no and T3 was, was our, our, our sort of event of the month, right? It was always the thing we were known for. But no one really knew what T3 meant. Mm. Um, you know. Third Thursday. <laughs> it did mean third Thursday, <laughs> thank you. We've, we've launched Connecting, which is, which is the new sort of brand for our networking events. Mm. Um, we will use the same word connecting across uh, Pattaya or mm -hmm. Eastern Seaboard, Western Seaboard, Chiang Mai and, and Bangkok and any other, or Phuket I guess, any other regions we have. And the idea is that we're connecting cities, so connecting Bangkok, connecting Eastern Seaboard. And you know, we, we've looked at <clears throat> what we've always done in the past, which is to have briefings, to have lunches, to have dinners, to have networking events. And um, we looked at what the other chain was doing. And, we realized that actually making our networking events about business, about giving members the chance to, to reach out to, to connect with government officials, um, leaders of industry, 
you know, whatever it might be, is, is, is perhaps a good route forward for us to make it back about business. Otherwise, it's so easy just to go to an event, have a couple of beers, meet some people, share a business card and walk away. And yeah, you've met some great people. You've, you've had some interesting conversations, but you might not have learned anything. Guilty. <laughs> oh, sure, <laughs> right? Um, I think we have one tonight. And you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will do the same. But tonight is actually our first um, proper connecting. We had one a month ago. We had four or five members introducing themselves and their companies. And, and actually, we had four or five really good pitches um, and I learned a lot about our members. Um, tonight we have one with the Deputy Director General of the BOI, explaining the next five years of what the BOI's focus is. No, no other chamber is doing that right now, and I think that's really, really important. It gives our members a chance to ask questions. How often do you get a chance to talk to the Deputy Director General of the BOI and say, how about this, what about this? You know, and I think it's sort of directly from them. There's, there's no interpretation, there's no Chinese whispers, it's not a translation of what's gone through and, and some some you know, newspaper or, or the tiger or whatever. So I think this is a really good chance now for our members to connect with industry, with government and, and learn. Um, you know, and then when they go to network afterwards, they have a talking point. It's like, what do you think about this? How will this affect your business? Uh, and so on, you know, I think, I think it's, a, it's a good move, but we'll see how it works. Definitely, I think that's, that's exactly where the chamber is right now. It's evolving these things that are already working and making them even better and yeah. even more responsive to the market of the, this, this generation, because obviously we're working with different demographics now, different groups of people. I think both when both of us started coming to the chamber, we were, especially you were, but we were the youngest people around yeah. and now we're, <laughs> now we're not, <laughs> now we're veterans. <laughs> so uh, I think the, the younger generation as well, they want more, they want more from a chamber than just the social club. And I think you're doing a great job of delivering that. So you've got the Connecting Bangkok. There's also, I believe, the, the, the CEO focused. Uh, Business yeah. leaders did this, yeah. Um, this is not my incentive. I think this was definitely a, not this negative thing. I mean, this was just something we're bringing back as opposed to something new. Um, it was before my time, I think, uh, business leaders dinners. But yeah, we've got, I think, July, August, early August. Um, we're going to have an event where we're going to have a prominent speaker and it will be primarily focused at, at sort of, I guess, business leaders, um, owners, C-suite, managers, directors, and so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, we're not elitist, right? You know, we're not going to just have events for business leaders and, and forget everyone else. You know, we've got a, a wide range of members. We've got young professionals. We've got people who are from all, all industries, sizes of companies. And so, you know, we're definitely going to focus more on other types of events as well, whether that's site visits, whether that is, you know, continuing with briefings, continuing with working groups. Um, we're going to bring back wine tastings, some cultural events, I suppose. Um, not, not just the piss up. Uh, yeah, so I think, you know, look, right now we're, we're looking at all of our member groups. We, we have SMEs, <coughs> sorry. We have SMEs, we have enterprises, we've got one-man bands, we've got people in Thailand, people outside of Thailand, and we indicate to all of these people. Um, I'm actually going to the UK soon, and I'll meet with some of the, uh, the members in, in London. Um, I'll meet with some of the I guess, Thai UK associations there, the Thai ambassador. So yeah, I think there's a lot going on, really excited, um, and I think that you know, again, we, there's just lots happening. We'll see what works. Um, some things might not work. And that's cool. We learn, we move on. Uh, final, que final, final serious question for the day. <laughs> um, so we've got the, the classic marquee events, the garden party, the Christmas party, the Thailand Business Awards, the Central Business Awards. We've got T3s evolving into Connecting Bangkok. What's your favorite BCT event? Um, anyone that I'm not talking at. Okay. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> no, I, I mean, what have we got? We've got Tech Night coming up soon, which was which is kind of um, an evolution of, of the American or the AmCham's Gadget Night. So that used to be a big event that they ran. Uh, they haven't run it since before COVID. Uh, and you know, as again, it comes as no surprise for anyone, technology is quite close to my heart. So I thought it'd be good for us to pick it up. So we're doing a Tech Night late July, late August, late, 29th of August currently. Um, date might change. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to run that with, with AmCham and the Japanese Chamber. And we're going to get lots of big tech companies together to show off stuff, right? So many of our events are go and listen to someone talk. Mm -hmm. But you remember when you're a kid and you, it's Christmas and you get something to play with, right? It's so much fun because you get a couple of hours of, I'm going to build this, I'm going to yeah. play with that, it's electrics, whatever it might be. And now at Christmas, you're like, thanks for the socks, mum. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, so I want something like that. I want a little bit of fun. I want a little bit of theater and drama in it. So we're running a tech night. I guess it's going to be interactive. We're going to have drones. We're going to have, you know, cocktail making machines and kitchen gadgets and hopefully some EVs and so some cool stuff, right? I think it's 
I wanted to call it Take My Money, um, <laughs> but we're going with, with Tech Night. <laughs> Correct, right? And, and I think that's the, that's it. You know, I think the chance now for the Chamber is, is to do some fun stuff and see what sticks. So, yeah, I, I, you know, my, my favorite event right now is, is probably Life and Style. That was a, we had a really good Life and Style this year. The team did an excellent job on that. Christmas is always good fun. Um, you know, it's, 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 I think it's hit the right language. It's hit the right, I don't know, you know, I think in the past, perhaps we could have been seen as a little bit out of date, um, but it's got with the times. It's a very good event now. Christmas party is always fun. In Life and Style is great. I've never been to Atiba. <laughs> No, and even, even though we as won, a winner, <laughs> even as a winner, no. Um, I was in the US last year. And I think everything in the past I've been away for. Um, thankfully, my colleagues went to collect our award last year. But I, this year, I want to be at Tiba. I think there's a lot we can do with that. That's obviously a really good event. We're talking about having an Eastern Seaboard version as well. So Tiba Bangkok, Tiba Eastern Seaboard, because there's a lot of industry down there that's doing great stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, my favorite event this year will be Tech Night for sure, because it's going to be cool. But um, otherwise, yeah, it's, it's life and style. Okay, so Gareth, we've had all the serious questions out of the way. As you know, at Lexicon, we focus on storytelling. I always ask my, my guest this question, but who are some of your favorite storytellers? Well, I can't say you. <laughs> you could say me. Go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, I read a lot. I read, read a lot of books, and, and I was actually having a conversation yesterday about James Herriot. Okay. Do you ever, do you ever read these books? Um, and just, just as a kid, laughing a lot. Um, and I saw, I was at Dad's house recently, and uh, it was back on TV. All things great and small. All creatures great and small. All creatures great and small. Um, so I think about those books as being fun. Roll dull, though, I must say. You know, just, just as, as, as when I think of books as a kid, Roll dull is the one that, that comes out. Just his ability to, to form images in your mind and imagination. That was always really, really good. Quarter is that always stays with me. Um, a little silliness now and then is cherished by even the greatest men. <laughs> exactly. So what about business storytellers? Are there any particular, like, are you inspired by any business people? Like Gary Vee, for example, I'm sure you're not. Uh, but Richard Branson, people like that. Is there any particular business person who's given you inspiration to do what you do? No, not really. <laughs> I mean, I think when I read, I read it to, to escape. Mm. I don't read to, to necessarily spend more time working. I spend enough time working as it is. So. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, it's great. It's great when you read something from Richard Branson. It's great when you read something, something about Steve Jobs. It's great when you read anything not written by Elon Musk. Um, but yeah, no, not really. I think I've read some books that I, I've enjoyed. I've read some books that I thought were fun. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you, uh, Chaos Monkeys about Twitter. Uh, Twitter I think it was Twitter early in the day or Facebook, one of the, one of the sort of advertising things. Um, you know, No Rules Rules, which I think was one of your suggestions. They're all good books and they're interesting and there's some stuff you can learn, but I've never sort of thought, Wow, I've got to do this, <laughs> and that's not because I'm awesome. It's just because you know I think you do your own thing, and you think oh, I could learn something from that. But it's been done, mm. and, and I think much like the chamber, we can't just look at what's been done and copy it. You have to look at what's been done and go, okay, maybe I can incorporate parts. So when I think of inspiring writers and storytellers, nothing from a business point of view. Okay, great. So uh, final question: favorite Roald Dahl book? Um, ECO Trot. <laughs> <laughs> Taught us backwards. Uh, yeah, I think that always got to be, it's got to be uh, the twits. On that topic, thank you, Gareth. Just <laughs>